I'm pleased to be joined by Executive Director of the Reese's Senior Bowl, Jim Nagy. Jim spent 18 years as an NFL scout, an area scout for the Southeast for Seattle Seahawks before accepting his post at the Reese's Senior Bowl, where he's been since 2018. And he's been a part of four Super Bowl winning teams, two for the Pats, two for, one for the Packers, one for my father's Seahawks. He's very excited about this. And he is a Michigan man. Jim, thanks so much for taking time to join us here. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great, RJ. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited to talk with you because we here at the number one college football show are very interested in what the University of Michigan is doing. And you had a tweet that took on its own level of virality when talking about Michigan and its offensive line. I'm calling the na Nagy Nasty Seven here. Zach Zenter, <laughs> Trevor Keegan, Drake Nugent, Trent a. Jones, Kareem Barnhart, Miles Hinton, and Ladarius Henderson. Why do you think that this group could be so good? Because they're all NFL guys mm -hmm. uh, to one degree or another, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Keegan, uh, Keegan and, and Zach Zinner are probably the, the household names uh, for Michigan fans. They've been part of the last two Joe Moore Award uh, winners, which is the best offensive line in college football. So, um, so those guys are household names. But, you know, bringing in guys like Henderson and Hinton, um, Nugent from other schools, you've got seven guys at one school in the same class, RJ. You know, this has happened before. There, there's been other offensive line rooms around college football over the years since I've been in scouting that have had seven pros at the same time, not in the same class. So very unique. Who knows? Maybe a couple of guys will stick around um, next year. And they're, they all got an extra COVID year. I mean, that's the thing. That's what makes everyone in personnel's job hard right now is like, who's leaving for the draft? Who's not? Who's using the COVID year? Who's not? Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty unique to have seven guys in the same class that could all go out in the same draft and all have a chance to be drafted. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, hasn't happened in my 25 years in scouting. I know that. Well, it's one thing to say that they're all good and they're all coming out at the same time. It's another thing to say that they're the first, uh, group that's part of a two time Joe award, Joe Moore award winning, which offensive line, which has been around since 2015. So we still got a smaller sample size to go there, yeah. but Michigan historically has been a place that values running the football and you being an alumnus and you having watched that team for better part of your life what do you think makes Michigan so good regardless who the head coach is at producing great offensive linemen well the tradition for sure the history I think players want to go places where they feel like they're going to get developed to make it to the next level right so there's been all these NFL guys going back you know Steve Hutchinson um, who's on the Seattle scouting staff he kind of was coming in when I was going out to take this job you know, Hutch is a gold jacket guy. There's been a number of them. Um, you know, I think Michigan's getting back to the roots a little bit, running the football with Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum um, being what they are. And you really got to play to to where you're at, right? I mean, you're up in Michigan. You're, you don't need to throw it around. I mean, we're down here in Alabama. We're down here in the South. I mean, it's warm down here. You can throw it around through the season. Um, you get up in Big Ten country at, around Halloween time um, and through Thanksgiving. I mean, it, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, there, Michigan played a couple snow games last year. Uh, um, so they're getting back to the roots. And I think players that go back to the player part, they want to go to a place where they can know they can get to the next level. And, and right now, Michigan's proven that. I'm glad you brought up the weather, because one of the things that I always think is interesting in this era where we want to throw the football more than we've ever thrown the football. I understand why, you know, I'm I'm an air raid quarterback myself. But when you get <laughs> into the winter, November, December, at every level, it seems like the teams that can run the football are the ones that are there at the end. And they got a couple of two tandem, uh, a tandem uh, set of tailbacks that you mentioned in Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum that can help them do that. But the thing that I always thought was most interesting about them is we don't particularly care about who the quarterback is until the quarterback shows up and he can sling it. What do you see <laughs> from J.J. McCarthy that allows you to believe, oh, my goodness, we got one that could go for 4,000 if he needed to go for 4,000? You know, J.J. came in. He was the first five-star quarterback in a long time at Michigan. I, I don't follow the high school stuff nearly as closely as, as the draft process, obviously. But but they hadn't had a five-star quarterback in a long time. And you hadn't really seen him play until he got into that bowl game, that college football playoff semifinal a couple of years ago when, when they pulled McNamara, put J.J. in against Georgia. The game was already out of hand. Um, but then you really saw the tools. I mean, Cade McNamara is a good college quarterback. He's won a lot of games at Michigan. There's a lot of Michigan people are going to, you're going to love Cade McNamara, um, a really efficient player, but the, the, the arm strength, the athleticism, it just, it looked just watching the TV copy. I mean, that night watching it on the tube, I mean, you could see, you could see the difference. So really high end uh, physical traits. That's what the NFL is looking for right now. He's athletic. He can throw it. 
Um, this will be a big year for him. Now he's going into year two as the starter full time. Um, I'm looking to see that jump. I mean, I think that's why everyone's so high on Michigan right now, because if JJ does take the jump, I mean, now look out because you know, they're going to be able to run the football. If JJ can take that next step, um, it's going to be a tough team to beat. I don't want to put you on the spot too much here, but I am going to say after coming off of two college football playoff appearances, winning back-to-back big 10 championships and looking at the roster as it is constructed, would you say that this is the best Michigan team we'd seen in the last 25 years heading into the season? You know, they've been really good the past two years. Let's not lose sight of that. They've lost a lot of good NFL players just in the just in the edge category. Look at like the outside linebacker room. You've had the Rashawn Garys, the Quiddy Pays, the Aiden Hutchinsons, the David Ajabos. I mean, these guys are all top 50 NFL draft picks. So they've had a lot of talent. But you look at the offensive line, you look at the two running backs, you look at the quarterback. Um, this is probably their best team and most experienced team. And you, now you've got a, a roster full of players that lost those two games and should have a massive chip on their shoulder um, and not want to repeat that. So, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of reason for optimism. And I think a lot of it is because Jim's kept that team intact. Not, not a lot of transfer portal, um, a lot, not a lot going out of Ann Arbor, a lot coming in, not a lot going out. Um, and guys have been through two really hard season ending losses the last two years and, and want to prove themselves. I'm very excited to see what Michigan has. I have them at number two in my preseason ranking at Fox Sports, which means I expect them to make that national championship game, maybe get a redemption game against Georgia. It'd be a a lot of fun to watch. I want to transition a little bit back to you personally and talk a bit about your journey. And I would be remiss if I did not start with having graduated in 96 from Michigan, your overlap with Tom Brady, who for many is the most recognizable Michigan football player, if not one of the best. I mean, Charles Woodson was my guy when he was playing at the time for obvious reasons. But what did you see in Tom that might have led you to believe, oh, he can not just do it at the NFL level. He could probably do it at a very high level. You know, I think, again, it's kind of revisionist history now. But the thing Tom's always had is is the competitive fire. Um, I remember when he was a freshman and he was the seventh string quarterback. Um, There was a lot of good players in front of him. And He took that challenge. He moved all the way from from San Mateo, California, uh, to be the seventh string quarterback, believing in himself. Um, I don't think anyone would have said he would have won seven Super Bowls when it was all said and done. But when you see Tom in those critical situations in games, even going back to his time at Michigan, right? I mean, he stepped up in big moments. And I think I think what we lose sight of, Tom was 17 and four as a starter at Michigan. People act like Tom barely played at Michigan. He played a lot of good football there. Um, but, but going back all the way back to that time, um, when, when he needed to make a throw and he needed to move his team, critical moment, two minute end of game, um, he came through. And I think that's where as an evaluator, I think a lot of people have learned that lesson from Tom is you really watch the quarterbacks in the moments that really count in the game, um, and what they do in those moments. So yeah, unbelievable career, uh, man, it's going to be, it's going to be weird not watching him. So so the NFL just seems different without him. It just, it's, uh, just seems like a different league. Certainly. I mean, 20 years playing in this league, doing what he did, it does feel like he's just become a part of the furniture. So I'm with you on (laughs) how the transition has gone. But also, I'm very interested if you can tell us a bit about how to be better fans watching the sport and getting to understand the sport, because you put in the miles, you put in the days, I believe at one point in your career, you're on on the road 190 nights a year. How does the game evaluate today versus then? And how can we as fans better watch the game and be better fans about what we're seeing. Yeah, RJ, that's why I'm sitting in this chair. That scouting mm-hmm. life is, is not all it's cracked up to be sometimes. I mean, that's a lot of time away from your wife and kids. I'll, I'll say that. Um, I, I would say take your eye off the ball a little bit. You know, like I think everyone's focused on, a lot of people are focused on watching the ball and where that goes. I think you see some of the best football in the trenches. Um, you know, I think big picture sometimes, if you, you know, if you don't have a huge background in football and you just want to watch, it's hard to know what all 22 parts are doing, but watch those trenches, man. You watch the big guys. That's why I think people love senior bowl one-on-one battles because they watch the offensive line and defensive line. And you watch two big 300 pound guys collide and you can kind of tell who got the better of the, of the other guy. Right. Um, so that I would say that watch the big guys. I don't think a lot of people are inclined to watch the uh, O-line D line. Um, and there's some fun football in there. Absolutely. And I want to get into the specifics of what you are watching as you prepare to invite guys to the Reese's Senior Bowl and also want to acknowledge the tremendous success that the Senior Bowl has had more or less since you took over. It's already been an institution. We've been watching that game for some years, but 
my goodness, when I see some of the guys that come through there and I see the way in which you are able to market the Senior Bowl, I am blown away. Uh, as an Oklahoma fan, seeing the <laughs> Oklahoma on one side of Jalen Hurts' helmet and the Alabama on the other side, I said, okay, so, somebody was thinking this went through. Somebody's going to make <laughs> sure that everybody understands that we know what Jalen represents to the sport. How has that transition been for you, and how do you go about, well, evaluating the players that you want to invite to the Senior Bowl? Yeah, that Oklahoma thing, that went for a lot of money. We auctioned that off. That uh, that Jalen helmet went for a lot of money. Uh, no, the Senior Bowl has been great for a long, long time. I, I will say this. I mean, we have we have used social media to market the game and, and really – and really get it out there. What a great game this is. Um, you know, the, the folks here in Mobile, this, this is, we're getting ready to celebrate our 75th anniversary um, this year. And we're putting together a 75th anniversary team a minute. And we're only taking players from the last 25 years because we already did a 50th anniversary team 25 years ago. Uh, but I mean, you're talking the defensive line is going to be DeMarcus Ware, Aaron Donald, Michael Strahan. The linebackers are going to be Derek Brooks, Patrick Willis, um, you know, Brian Urlacher. So, I mean, I think that's who they'll be. Well, they'll, they'll be on the ballot. I don't know. We're doing a fan vote, so we'll see who the, van, the fans vote for. Uh, but I'll say this, like, this has been a great job. People ask if I miss the NFL, and I do around draft time to an extent. Um, but what we've tried to do here is just build uh, build a personnel department the best we can with our resources. And like this year, for example, we have 11 former NFL scouts on our staff. I um, mean, we'll be all over the country at games every Saturday. And if it were just me it's sitting in Mobile, Alabama, picking a roster, like that would not be fun. Like I, I'm all about a collaborative process. I love talking about players and, and bouncing ideas and, and, and having those disagreements and, and uh, those respectful arguments, if you will. So, so that's our process. That's how we do it. So we're going to hit the ground heavy. We put the schedule together today as a, as a staff we will probably be at a dozen of, you know, 12, 13, 14 games every week. Um, and just, and we owe it to these players. We, we have to have a real process because there's a lot of players all around the country at all levels, division three, division two, FCS, um, and they all deserve a chance. Um, so we're going to watch all the tape and do the best we can. And we're not going to always get them right, but, um, we're going to do our best. I appreciate the work. You guys mentioned a name and it sends me down a rabbit hole and I get to find out so much more about these players and their stories. And that's why I do what I do is I love to tell those stories and learn those stories. And if not for you all being able to evaluate them the way you are, perhaps I never hear about them. I want to talk a little bit about, you mentioned Patrick Willis, who is an old Miss well, Hall of Famer for me, right? Mississippi Hall of Famer for most, but also you get to work with one. Sly Kroon was that guy when I was growing up in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. That was our guy. Do you have a story you can tell us about the great Sylvester Kroon? He is a, he is a legend. Um, I would say the best story is uh, when they hired me here at the Senior Bowl. Um, it wasn't a, it probably wasn't a big enough hire at the time. Um, so they they piggybacked they 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 put Sly Kroom in the deal. They made him vice president of the Senior Bowl. Uh, he kind of carried the press release, I guess. But uh, no, he's been an unbelievable mentor for me. I, I'll say this like a personal story. Uh, my son played high school football the last couple of years. He was a senior. Um, last fall. And we had a little thing every Thursday night uh, before the games where the families would bring in a guest speaker. Um, and I was able to bring Coach Kroom in to speak to my son's team, the, the group of seniors. It was just the seniors. Brought him over to the house. Um, and we played some of the, the ESPN documentary that they did years ago um, on Coach Kroom and his history, being the first you know black head coach in the SEC and, and just being a pioneer in the sport. And man, to see the look, we played the video first. We played some of the video first. And then when he walked in the room, um, the respect he got from guys. I mean, these kids are, they, they weren't around when coach Kroom was, was at Mississippi state and they don't know the legend. And, and now to meet him in person, man, to see it, see the younger generations respect, and then hear him talk about his playing days at Alabama and what he got from bear Bryant, man. It was a, it was a special night. I'll never forget it. Outstanding man, outstanding legacy and means the world to me personally. Uh, before I let you go, Jim, I would be remiss if we did not talk about the guy that we all expect to be the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. I say we being folks with me, like me with a microphone in Caleb Williams at USC, <laughs> returning Heisman winner. I don't know that we've seen the kind of hype that is around what he has done and could do at USC. Could you tell us what makes him different rather than his ability to just make things happen when the pocket is no longer there? Well, uh, first off, I think we need to come up with what are we coining this thing? You know, mm -hmm. we, we had tanking for Tua a few years ago. I don't know what we're doing for Caleb, but uh, no, he's he's special now. I, I don't spend a ton of time 
watching players that aren't, you know, eligible to play in the recent senior bowl. So, um, but you know, guys are special when you're not looking for them, you're not watching them and they just make certain plays that pop out. Sometimes as a scout, that's how you'll identify a really good underclassman. Like I'm sure back in the day, Charles Woodson stuck out like a sore thumb blanketing people at Michigan. Um, but there's just some of the plays that some of the throws he makes. I mean, I think everyone understands kind of, he has a Mahomes ish quality to, you know, change release points and, and do those things. But what I didn't realize going and watching their offensive line um, over the summer, he's a really good athlete, man. Like he makes some things happen with his legs that I, you know, you don't always see in the highlights, you see mm -hmm. the throws and the highlights. Um, this dude's a really good athlete too. Now. I mean, he, he gets out in space and can make people miss and he's really slippery. So uh, true dual threat. I, I don't know who's going to tank for him this year or what we're going to call that. Uh, but he's certainly a franchise quarterback, man. I mean, he, he seems like a, seems like one of the best ones that's come around in a long time. He has certainly said that he wants to play for a younger coach and we'll see what that looks like. So maybe we'll come up with something that has to do with that. Last one for you, Jim, <laughs> is yeah. there, is there a player that you are watching that is eligible for the senior bowl that we should know about? Oh man, uh, we we mentioned Blake Corum earlier, the running back at Michigan. There's a bunch. Just a really good class. I mean, one guy that I, I looked at the other day who's coming back, who really surprised the NFL, is a guy named Jared Burst at Florida State. Um, he's an edge player. He was a transfer from Albany University last year, so every he transferred way up to the ACC. Had a monster year for those guys to the point where there were some NFL teams that had first round grades on Jared last year. Had he come out last year? So I think what we're seeing now is some of this NIL is keeping guys in, which, you know, self-servedly, it's great for the senior bowl, right? These guys are staying in school. Um, but Jared versus an impact player. Um, I don't think he'll get out of the first round. He can, he can play the run. He can play the pass. He can get up to the quarterback. So um, that would be a name for, for casual fans that aren't really into the draft stuff yet. Jared versus Florida State's a good one. I'm certainly going to watch him uh, along with Jordan Travis and what the Knowles have done uh, just last year, beating up on my Oklahoma Sooners in the Cheez-It Bowl. They got my full attention, as do you, Jim Nagy, Executive Director of the Reese's Senior Bowl. Thank you so much for taking time to join us here on the number one college football show. RJ, thanks for having me on, man. This was a blast. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.